Late in 2021, Swedish company Jetson released the Jetson 1 electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicle. Orders started to roll in way quicker than the kits could get manufactured and only a few order slots remain available for 2023. This is all fairly old news by now and there are a lot of videos on YouTube about the Jetson 1. But in this video I wanted to go into a little bit more detail around where this new type of craft will fit into the market, how licensing will work, who the target market is and how it affects existing ultralight aviation. So the Jetson 1 is not the first eVTOL able to carry a person, but it is the first production craft not aimed at commercial aviation, but recreational aviation. Additionally, all its specifications indicate it is aimed to be operated as a part 103 ultralight, which in the US means it can be flown without a license. However, at the $92,000 purchase cost, who is this aerial vehicle for? Jetson claims they want to make everyone a pilot, but at that price, it's hardly realistic. For the vast majority of fixed wing ultralight pilots, that purchase price will certainly be out of reach. But what about ultralight helicopters? I can certainly see the Jetson 1 challenging ultralight helicopters for recreational use, were it not for a few important factors. While the Jetson 1 is certainly a lot cheaper than most ultralight helicopters, as well as much easier to fly, it has some significant limitations. The biggest of which is its maximum flight time of 20 minutes. Not only will that be a serious hindrance for the average ultralight pilot, but places a severe limitation on any A to B travel in the Jetson 1. At its maximum speed of 63 miles per hour at its endurance limit of 20 minutes, it will only have a range of about 21 miles. Additionally, a lot of ultralight helicopter pilots are using it as a stepping stone to move to larger helicopters at a later point in time. So the Jetson 1 will hardly make ultralight helicopters redundant, at least at this point in time. While these EV tools might certainly someday replace ultralights and even light sport aircraft, that day is not today. And the Jetson 1 can't really compete with any ultralights currently on the market. So what does the Jetson 1 offer then? Let's look at something that ultralights and light sport aviation can't do. The Jetson 1 can take off vertically and land in more confined space than even an ultralight helicopter. Some are even saying that the Jetson 1 will be the modern way to commute. But to that I say, how? Since it will need to be operated as a part 103 ultralight in the United States, FAR 103 prohibits flying over congested areas. So you can forget about flying it to work or to the supermarket unless it's away from congested areas. In other countries it will be even worse, where you need a license to fly ultralights, unlike the US. If you are finding this video informative so far, please hit that like button to help YouTube recommend it to more people. Thank you. I'm also not sure how it will be operated in countries like Canada and South Africa. Since there are at least one order from South Africa, I guess we'll find out sometime after 2023. But my guess is it will require an ultralight permit in Canada and a national pilot's license in South Africa, at least with the rules as it is currently in 2022. And if the owner or pilot is not already in possession of a license, they will also not be able to do their mandatory training in the single seat Jetson 1, as a certain amount of training hours with an instructor on board is a requirement. This means that they will need to train on a conventional ultralight to get those hours before they can legally fly their Jetson 1. Okay, so maybe this doesn't highlight the shortcomings of the Jetson 1, but rather the shortcomings of the FAAs and CAAs around the globe with regards to this new type of aircraft. An eVTOL won't require anything near the amount of training hours that conventional ultralights do, which makes that requirement somewhat silly. But until that changes, pilots will need to do it to be able to legally fly their Jetson 1 in South Africa and Canada. To me, however, this confirms that the US is the only viable market for the Jetson 1 at this time. But who will want one of these? Well, you'll need to dish out $92,000, 
you will need to have space to fly it, like a farm or hangar it at an airfield or trailer it to an airfield or open space away from congested areas where you will fly it for 20 minutes before the fun is over. This doesn't mean that the Jetson 1 isn't a technological marvel and it will certainly be an incredibly fun machine to fly. It might also draw new interest into general aviation as opposed to competing with conventional general aviation aircraft, which could be a very good thing overall. It might also prompt aviation administrations around the world to have another look at the current rules and finally modernize. Maybe. And on the subject of aviation rules and regulations, watch this video on the rules on low flying in South Africa.